What are you being dragged? <laughs> I'm a woman. I'm trying to be like a evil, like a bitchy, like French uh, editor. Ah, I can't figure out the background. Oh, get it out of here. I am so excited to share this very, um, I'm starting again. I'm sorry. Hi guys, it's Candy and welcome back to Candy Unwrapped. Today, I have a very dear friend. He is a celebrity image maker. And now, I would like to introduce to you my friend, my lover, Carl oh Dian. Yay! Oh, hi. Is today's topic drag? You said I thought it was uh, meat byproducts. Yeah, wrong day. Uh -huh. How are you? I am very good, my sweet love. It's so so good to see you. I want to start, and I think the question that probably everyone is thinking is, what is an image maker? Oh, well, I decided to sort of give myself this name because I started in makeup, then I went to photography, and then I directed music videos, and everybody's like, what do you do again? And I'm like, I tried to just do an all-in-one sort of name. An image maker was like, I got that title from a book about Hollywood in the 1930s, where they talked about how they used to make a star, the makeup, the hair design design and how they used to pair them with directors and certain lighting people to get the best out of them. Because I really don't work with anyone else, really. I do the makeup, I do the lighting, I do the photography, and a lot of times we just shoot some videos. I mean, well, music videos. So I'm an all-in-one shop. So instead of saying, I'm a makeup artist, I'm a this, I'm an image maker. Celebrity photographer and model photographer, Carl Giant. Hi, Carl. Hey. As a photographer, you do a little bit of everything. Carl the most giant. important thing you need is a vision. If you don't have a vision, you don't have anything. Dark eyes, no mouth, just gloss. You're kind of a director, you're kind of a producer, you're kind of a stylist, or a machine. You're in charge of all these groups of people from makeup to hair, and you're responsible for making that vision come true. You have to be unique and original. I love that picture. That. I wish so it was on Top Model, actually. My other question is, what is drag? Well, I think drag is how you want to present yourself to the world. So some people may think drag is just like a guy dressing up in a dress and putting some lipstick on. They're like, oh, that's drag. I'm crazy. I'm in drag. But really, drag is anything. Like, um, it's how you want to present yourself to the world. Like, a, a firefighter putting on his outfit or putting on his, his mm. uniform, that's his drag. Or, or a cop, that's his drag. Or like, you know, when you're a businessman, you wear a suit. That's your drag is whatever you plan your day to be. Like, sometimes, you know, I dress for how... Oh, I never do this, by the way. I mean, I used to be a baby drag queen and then I had a TV show and I was a drag queen. I don't do any drag anymore, really. But so that's why I'm happy to be here with you because I wanted to show people and let them understand drag isn't just crazy drag queens with outlandish makeup. It's it, like I could say to you, like you have a very distinct look. You have like the smoky eyes and the hair and everything. I could be like, that's your drag. You know, if I bet if you don't have the eyes on in the morning, you're like, today's going to go bad. I don't got my eye on. I don't got the drag. You know what? You're right. I need to have my eyes on almost all the time because that's how you I partner exactly because that's how i feel that's how i feel good it's kind of my thing you know like it's your identity the... too it's how you want to be perceived yes it's it's, exactly. it's not just feeling good it's your identity it's like your superhero costume superman puts on his drag from clark kent to superman i'm in drag so drag is anything it doesn't have to be masculine or feminine it could just be your thing rupaul always says you're born naked and the rest is drag it's true we're born little naked babies and then who decided the only thing I could wear is like a polo shirt, Crocs, and a pair of chinos. That ain't my drag, but for a lot of gentlemen and certain ladies, that's their drag. What I'm going to tell you, I think the stereotypical mm. way of how people view drag, and this is, it's a generic way of saying what I uh -huh. think most people see is a gay man putting makeup on and going out and trying to be like a woman. That's what I think this society i hope today it's very different as you were saying i'm i'm with you 
I feel like I have my drag on today. And uh-huh. every time I'm on Candy Unwrapped, when I put my jewelry on, when I, everything I do, it's a decision and it makes me, I mean, look, I look like I'm wearing drag queen makeup. I don't mind it at all. And that's another thing that I want you to talk about, the drag queen makeup. Um, First of all, I, I don't like that term. Like, I look like I have drag queen makeup on. That almost sounds like, to me, like a negative. Like you're saying, oh, if it's overdone or too much, it's drag. Drag, like I said, could be anything. It could be soft, it could be subtle. Like, everybody thinks drag is huge, outrageous, garish. Like, the reason why some people do a lot of makeup is to, like, change the shape of their face to make it more feminine if you're a man. I don't know how I look really today. But, you know, we're blown out with lights here and stuff like that. So, like, whenever I used to, when I used to do women's makeup, they go, ah, don't make me look like a drag queen. And I go, don't worry, you won't look that good. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like a slur. Ugh, look at her makeup, looks like a drag queen I did it. Like, I did, I certainly wouldn't, I, I don't want any. I'm offended. Feel offended, no. <laughs> I don't want to feel as though I made offensive. I'm kidding, I'm just busting your balls. I have another question is, how did you discover drag? What made you interested in drag? Well, I moved to New York in 1991, even though I'm only 23. So at that the time, in the time, that was the era of the club kids, the super clubs, like the limelight, the Roxy, uh, Save the Robots, Club USA, and we had these club kids. And then I would always look at look at the drag queens and they got in for free and they got free drinks. And they were like celebrities, celebrities. They were movie stars. Now I was the first guy, do you remember, like there used to be people, like cigarette girls, cigar girl, and they walk around with a box and you'd have Absolutely. cigarette, gum, condoms, you know, right. whatever. So Absolutely. I was the first, and that was called Miss, that was called Miss Kitty Girls. And they, um, they were, they went to every club and sold things. I was, and they all uh, hired girls. I was the first boy because I thought, oh, if I get this job, I can get into every club for free. So I studied club culture while making some fierce tips by selling cigarettes when you could smoke in clubs. How fun was that? I mean, if you're a smoker. Uh, it's ba- smoking is bad. Bad, bad, especially when I do it. So I was, I used to look at the drag hair. queens and be like, oh my God, you're beautiful. They're amazing. And I was just a cute boy. So I was like, huh, how can I get attention? How can I do something? I, I was a club kid, but I was like a cute club kid. I wasn't trying for gore or else outrageousness. And then I just kept wanting to, I wanted to see one day how pretty of a girl I could be. Could I do it? I didn't want to be outrageous. I just wanted to be a pretty girl. And I went to Candy Singer and said, make me a pretty girl. Oh. And you did my makeup for the first time, Miss Lady. And I think so it's it your was fault. In our, it was in my bathroom with my roommate. Um, at that the time, wrong. and we were getting you prepared, and I remember mm-hmm. your blonde wig, and I remember your mm-hmm. fishnet stockings, mm-hmm. and I remember after you were all done, we went down and we we had to catch a cab for you. You were the first one who really showed, like, turned me into like a pretty girl, and not like some overdone something that I consider to be overdone and garish. I've had other people do me in drag queen makeup, but you made me feel like pretty girl. So you had the girl side of. It. So that made me feel really great. And then I just started experimenting. It wasn't to, I never thought I was born in the wrong body. Always was happy with what I had between my legs, um, a vagina. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to experiment and see the pretty, see how pretty I could be. And that's where I kept going. And then eventually I had a, a neighbor, a Manhattan neighborhood network cable show. It's like a local cable show in Manhattan. And then I would go and interview celebrities and go to fashion shows and just be crazy. And I would always do new looks and experimenting. Some people thought I was real. Some people thought I was, hmm. Like the drag, some of the drag queens were like, um, honey, you need more. You're looking a little too natural. And then, well, I'm like, oh, I don't want to look like you. And then, you know, the the girls who had transitioned, they were like, oh no, less makeup, soft, soft, soft. So I fell somewhere in the middle of some, like, kind of like a, you know, just like pretty done, but not wacky crazy. Then the other question I have is how is drag different now than it was in the 90s? Drag is totally different now because everybody knows what a drag queen is now. And it's not um, a, a shameful, gross, making fun of thing. Thanks to RuPaul's Drag Race, it's just the worldwide domination of a celebration of people, you know, 
showing looks, turning, I mean, it, it's, we didn't have social media. We just had, if you were good, if you did a great lipstick, if you did a show, you had word of mouth. And then you got to book a show or have your own night or maybe get in the cover of a New York magazine or you'd have like a big two page spread in the village voice in New York. That was it. Like, yeah. or they had like Greek Day where you'd go on the Geraldo Rivera show or Donahue or, you know, Joan Rivers and be like, oh, look at the crazy club freak. Then it was sort of something to be made fun of. Now it's celebrated on a global scale and that's really, really amazing. Where do you see drag going in the future? Well, what I would like to see personally is seems like every, right now drag with the RuPaul version of drag to be on that show, you sort of have to have the same look. There was a few girls who had their own looks in the beginning and then there seems to be people are copying, copying, they're copies of copy of, copies of copies of the original look. Like Trixie Mattel, she like had a very distinct look and then it became Vogue um, to do that same sort of look. But I believe that when we see more originality in the makeup looks, I think it's looking a little too samey right now. So I think I think the new thing, let's see some new looks that I haven't seen before. I'd be excited about that. And that's in totality, like they're- In totality out because it's just like, who are like, you know, slim or feminine appearing, they can get away with just like an individual lash and some lip gloss. But when you're changing like a male brick face sometimes into a soft woman, you have to wear a lot of makeup or do it in a certain way that if you're genetically blessed, there's different categories of drag. There's body queen, comedy queen. Like, are you a body? You know, are you a thin, like beautiful model? Like an Amanda Lepore, Nick, like a, even Wait, though she is a trans woman, so let's not, I'm talking about just looks. So, Mm -hmm. what? What, mm -hmm. what is your look today? Like, what inspired you? Said that you just wanted to look like a beautiful woman. Yeah, correct? I don't think I said that. I think you said that. Thank you. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what did you say? <laughs> no, this is kind of my like, since I'm doing no <laughs> breasts today, I felt like um, I felt like a very editor of like a fashion magazine, like a, a Tilda Swinton mixed with like a Kardashian trying to do YSL with the no bra and just like nothing hair, you know, just like, mm, what? Nothing. Okay. But that's what that's what was in my head. I keep looking at the mirror because I see my hair looks fried right now. Stop, I'm going to hit you. Stop <laughs> looking in the mirror. No. Okay, now we can continue. You. This is mm -hmm. the second look. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your hair. I think your hair looks beautiful. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm a woman. I like this better. So now, what is this look? This is, you know what? This so Who is cool it? look. It kind of cooler. Back. I love this look. I'm a woman, or I'm a punk rock guy. I feel very punk rock now. Oh, I like this. I feel like I feel like a I slutty, like '80s, like bad girl who like ripped off John Galliano's suit collection. I was just gonna uh, say it's very John. John Galliano. The suit with the mm -hmm. everything. Oh wait, we have different looks. Who's this? Uh, uh, oh oh <laughs> my God! Well, who who are we meeting now? I feel like. I feel like I'm rich and I'm going to a very exclusive party on Halloween, but I felt like I went to Ricky's instead of like somewhere good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, all right. I'm Lauren, I'm Lauren. Oh my God, Lauren Azerski, who we love. We love you, Lauren. Lauren, ah, uh, women. <laughs> I anyway. I like you in everything. I have a good head. You have a great so <laughs> going. drag is I think it's um, that's a state of mind. No rules to it. That's what's so great about it. It's a state of mind. It's how so, you want to appear. If you feel like today be a unicorn, well, fine, be a unicorn. Obviously not a unicorn. But like some days I feel, I wake up and I'm like, what do I want to do today? And then I wear clothes that bring me joy and I try to just feel like doing something. I feel like this is the outfit to get me through the day. I always say to people, well, image is a choice. So like when I would do their makeup or like I'm like creating a look for a video, I go, what do you want to do? Do you just want to be sexy or do you... Or do you want to get the job? Do you want to get the guy? Well, there's certain looks for that, and I can I help people get there. It's I want whatever you want to accomplish in your day. Like when they always say, um, the suit makes the man uh, uh, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And yeah. I always tell this to people: if you want to get a promotion, dress just a little bit better than your boss. Like like dress just a little bit better because they will notice. Get yeah. if you can afford it, get the Louis Vuitton briefcase or bag or whatever. Like get this. There's certain signifiers, the watch, 
you can cheap it out on the clothes, but have good shoes, have a good, have things so the people in the know that you don't have to have logo blinged out things, but just well tailored things. You could go to Kmart and have a suit tailored, honey, but you can't fake a, you know, Chanel clutch unless you go to Chinatown and that's not even happening anymore. But there's certain signifiers, dress for the job you want, dress for, dress to be the best you, you, you can be. And so and that, that's what drag is. And that pertains to, to male, female. Everybody. Ev anyone. Yeah, I, I dogs, that, cats. Listen, I see a lot of dogs. I'm not kidding. They have. <laughs> I know in the mirror. Ah. Oh, stop! But I think that's that's a very, um, hopefully twenty. I'm going to say 2021 because I don't really want to talk about 2020. I'm in denial. But I know I, what happened in 2020? Oh, nothing. Um, frogs fell out of the sky. I think that in um, 2021, I do think that hopefully with social media and things like what we are doing now, being educated, looking at things differently than what you have might to. already perceived. Well, I, I don't know that everyone- Who are you um, talking to? Who's these, who are these everyone? Do you have like, your family no, is no, very- no. I'm trying to be, I'm talking about the world at large and I'm trying to be ge generic. So I'm, I'm making a statement based on nothing, based on- Right, based ideas on, that you have. Uh, on, right, this is based on my, imagina um, my imaginary head. I do feel, and I understand when you say, and you talk about all of these things, it is very true if I'm doing something or I'm going somewhere, I dress a certain way to feel a certain way. Right. And what it sounds to me is like, that's just drag. That's what we do every day is right. turn into what character we feel best in. Right. Well, a lot of people that I've noticing have been really feeling being in gross sweatpants and dirty t-shirts. So well, well, that's their drag. Well, it's not always great. From the waist down, I'm wearing my, my pajama pants. But what I'm saying is, you know, like even just having a great fitting shirt or something like that, just do it for yourself. It just makes you feel that much better. Wear something that makes you feel happy. There's so much crap in the world. Who cares? You should see the looks I get. I go, I dress like, I dress, A, does it make me laugh? B, you know, I hope somebody will enjoy it in the day. I dress so crazy going to the supermarket and people have a good chuckle and I have a chuckle. Cause like, either I could go like, wear my car hearts or just like, you know, I call it man clothes. Like, it's just like, I'm a man. I don't wipe my ass too good. Bleh. And then I go to the store, have a bad day, whatever. <laughs> but then I, honey, I put on my feather boa. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. I feel good. Just uh, even with the COVID, like, I'm like, okay, what matches this mask? I have so many masks. I'm like, let me match. Let me do something. Everything has to be an adventure because it's a shit show. And I'm just looking for like a little bit of fun and a little bit of spark joy with somebody. And I just spit. That's hot. Uh, no, and, and I was just going to say, I'm so glad you have your glasses because I was just going to say accessories like ah. glasses or hats or anything like that. I mean, I sure. just think like, what you have done right now is shown us about five different looks. I'm not, I may not be counting. Oh, pink on uh, pink. On. Matching. Oh, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I mean, that. there's there's so many. Uh, there's a boa over there. Is out of frame, and I really want to get it. Hold on. I hope. I think we can hold for the boa. Everybody oh loves a boa. God. So, how was your day? <laughs> we are holding for a boa. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might think it's a boa constrictor, but it is not. A lot of people are dumb. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, I like. <gasps> That's gorgeous. Honey, oh. this is fashion. I'm going to give it to you, honey. Uh, oh, I love uh, it. Give it to me. What? Uh, uh. I love it. I mean, listen, that who doesn't want to laugh? What? You know, who doesn't Which, want to have a laugh? But are you doing it to make others laugh? Or are you doing it to make yourself 
Oh, myself first. If nobody okay. likes it, I don't give a shit what they think. I only do it for myself, and if other people like it, great. If they don't, they could see you next Tuesday. Nope, that makes no sense. They could see you later. Yeah, well, I, I mean, every... I mean, when I'm feeling, like, kind of manly and kind of like, ooh, I want to see if I can stir up the, uh, the interest in the fellas, you know, I dress more conservatively or what I call, like, guy clothes, like, like dark denim jeans, a Henley, like a leather jacket over it, looking like, yeah you're telling us this. And why, by the way, I know that this is a very rare and it's a very, it's something that you do, uh -huh. which is appear in drag really anymore. Well, only on my OnlyFans, only on my OnlyFans do I do this. I don't, you're not getting I, any of my jokes, Candy. I know, I feel, I was just going to say, I, you're I, you're not you laughing where you should be laughing. Because you, you need to dumb it down. I'm not that smart. And I'm you are proud very smart. of that. Basically what I do is like I have a wardrobe and a, like a basically huge room of wigs and things. Basically, if I have a model, I can come in and, you know, I have stuff that I like. So it's not like I'm doing this for me. I mean, I have to love it. And then I incorporate it into a fashion shoot. So of course, not everybody is going to like have all of it at their beck and call. But why not? I mean, you know, they, everybody I'm should have like a rolling rack of fabulous. Oh, I love that. A rolling rack of fabulous. I have one last question that I think is really super important. Imagine that you are talking to a group of teens and 20 year olds who don't know Pose, who don't know Paris is Burning, who don't know anything about the 90s. What would you say to them is important for them to understand when you hear the word drag? For me, I think it, I think it depends on who you ask. I know you're asking me, but I never, when I was a full-time drag queen, I never called myself a drag queen. I said, no, 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 I'm a gender illusionist. To me, that wasn't my term. And my, my name in drag was... It's just be open and inclusive of everyone, you know? I'm like, I don't really use drag queen. I mean, I do, but not really. What I was, was just going to go mic drop because that was beautiful what you just said. That we what should all, forget. you just basically that we should all accept whoever we are and there is no right, there is no wrong. We all need to embrace right. whatever someone else is. We need to celebrate that. And well, I think. At least not kill them. Please. That would be the least thing. I think, if anything, social media has um, given more artists to show the world their work, as opposed to back in our day with what we did. You have to, like, struggle, 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 finally get somewhere, and then it's in a magazine or it's in a movie or it's in something. You do all this work, you wait a year, it finally comes out, it's out. It, if you just do a crazy eyelash or do a great look, ah! Um, you can put it on social media in seconds and become a quote influencer. So it like cuts all the work out. In a way, back in the day, you had to go to New York or LA to be an artist or somehow in the, you know, theater, television, modeling, whatever. But now you could be like me, an Instagram model. Uh. But it's true. That's, that's the wonderful thing. Now, it doesn't matter where you live. You can be free to be whoever you want to be yep. and not feel like you need to go to New York or you need to right. go to L. You should just be you. And I think the message for me, drag is just a word that means just being whoever you want to be. And another word for it is drag. You're born naked, the rest is drag. Well, I think that was a perfect thing to end this on. That was beautiful. You're I beautiful. Love, I really love you so much. Thank you for sharing 72 looks with us. I love, yes. I love you. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. I have, I, um, I enjoy you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you, obviously. I will take that as a compliment. However, whatever you say, I, 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 I do. I love you. I enjoy like you. With you. Brilliant. And thank ah, you. Thank you for you. drag for us today. I admire you. Candy, you unwrap me. Candy's wrapped. Whatever. Candy unwrapped. Candy unwrapped. If you That's like right. it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs and up. And follow Carl Giant on Instagram. K-A-R-L-G-I-A-N-T on Instagram. <laughs>